welcome to SvenFL. What's up, y'all? It's Jonathan Rollins. Skip me, Sarah. And we are two Americans living in Sweden. Talking. About football. It's zero. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that pause is so pregnant. I was about to give it an abortion. <laughs> Better hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> but before we started, we were talking about this is our last episode. Uh, no, no, no. I guess one will come out by the time the next episode comes out. It'll be right in the elections, but. I guess yeah, we'll, is, the next the next time we do an episode will probably be on election day. On election day. Yeah. I went and voted in person. It felt good. Oh nice. That's fun. Yeah, they they had the little stands out there, you know, where the people trying to get you to do stuff for the different you get a propositions. Sticker? I got a sticker. I got one for Allie. You know, they were so sweet. It was at a senior citizen activity center. You know how that is, man. They're all sweet. Yeah. And nice, but there were people outside. There's all the signs. Everybody got all the signs out as you get uh, until they can get to the no contact area where they mm. got to leave you alone. Mm. But they had all the signs out. And uh, this lady, I was with my mom. You know how my mom is, man. So I'm with yeah, my mom. <laughs> and this lady comes up, this Trump lady, who's it's dressed so nicely. This lady could have convinced me to vote against abortion. Mm. The way that she worded it. I mean, if I was, uh, I, I, I could say working on somebody else, not me. Cause I'm not anti-trans, but she came to talk about this uh, proposition that's getting voted on in Maryland. That is, uh, it's reproductive rights. Basically, Maryland's trying to make it where reproductive rights are in the state constitution, so mm. everybody can get an abortion or whatever help they need, reproductive wise. Mm. But she framed it as talking to me, a black man. She framed it like as a, like a trans question. And I was, Weird. it was like really confused. She was like, uh, this bill that they have here, they're trying to um, make it where kids can say they want their gender changed. It had nothing to do with it, man. Hmm. This lady was saying that. And I was like, oh, okay. Kids, gender change. Wow. And then I could see her hand was over something on the paper. And it was like a, the ballot list. And she had her hand over who you should vote for because she had her hand over the Donald Trump part. <laughs> She was like trying to block it. And my mom is my mom. So she was like, get that out of here. Get that out of my face. I know what you do. John, keep going. Keep doing. Don't listen to this lady. She tried to take away reproductive rights. I was like, oh. She was like, bitch, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> my mom was yelling at this lady. I was like, and then that made me feel like I got to listen to her. So both of us aren't rude. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm standing there like, oh, okay, okay. That's I was like, well, funny. I'll keep that in mind. And then I walk off. And voted for reproductive rights in Maryland, <laughs> but the way she framed it, it felt like a step step for wives type of thing. The way you know what I mean? Mm. She walked up and she was just like this wholesome mother. It was crazy, man. It's a crazy climate here. We yeah. came here for a Herslov so our kids can enjoy Halloween and all of that stuff. <laughs> but this election has the I've, I've I've never seen America. I could feel I could feel the tension in the air, man. And this is Maryland. When are you coming home? On Saturday. On the Saturday after the election, or this? No, Saturday? no, no. I'm coming home this Saturday. Yeah, the kids got to oh, go okay. back to school. I just came right, here because right, right, it was right. Herslov and. Uh, and so you're not there after, because I, I think the real chaos is going to be after election day. For oh sure. yeah. And it's for our listeners, crazy. we were talking about it before we came on that there people are setting fire to ballot boxes, mm. in in minority neighborhoods. It's not like that. Though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, how is this? How is that not, I don't know, to pretend you think there's voter fraud and then to go burn ballots? It doesn't match. I can't wait till it's over. I mean, honestly, speaking of things that we should set on fire, I guess we got to talk about the New York <laughs> Giants on Monday Night Football. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. How's that for a transition? Uh, yes. Steelers beat the Giants 26 to 18. This is kind of a, it was interesting because the game was tied 9 to 9 mm -hmm. at the half. Um, and then it finally gets uncorked with a 73 yard punt return to the house by Calvin Austin, the third. Um, he would also later catch a touchdown Even pass. Touchdown, yeah. Um, 
George Pickens was testing the concept of the two foot rule at one point <laughs> in this game. Man, the, that's the craziest one I've seen. He, he catches like, it, he taps yeah. one foot, and then he tapped the same foot. And they were like, no, yeah. you got to tap two feet. But, I mean, it's a fair question. I mean, you can tap a foot and an elbow, a foot and a butt, a foot. You can tap a foot in any other body part. You can tap a foot in your dick, and that's an exception. <laughs> but yeah. you can't and tap your shin, And foot. your shin equals two feet. But one foot twice doesn't equal two feet. Yeah, that's it's weird. It's a little Yeah, weird. man. That's some Dr. Seuss football uh, logic right there. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it's... Um, both teams were able to get to the quarterback. Both teams had five, four sacks apiece. But honestly, it was it, late in the game when it really mattered. It was T.J. Watt and Alex Highsmith who just kind of took over. Uh, he had the strip sack for yeah. T.J. Watt. And then, I mean, it was like they had one drive where they sacked him like two or three times in a row. It was just – it was brutal. When he slapped um, that ball out to determine the game, I felt that coming. Mm, <laughs> just coming around. Just yeah. swap up. Give me that. Uh, so but we got to give a shout out to Rainbow Russ, man. <clears throat> Rainbow Russ was balling. Yes, uh, Rainbow I mean, Russ. <laughs> and again, you know, it's like you kind of have to. I mean, it's two weeks in a in a row, but you, you kind of have to give a shout out to Mike Tomlin for just for just saying like, "Look, I'm, you know, this is why I'm, I'm well him. compensated." You know what I mean? This is why yes. he, he said it. This is why I'm well compensated. Like, uh, he's man, in the I was with my friend. Uh, my friend Bobby and we were talking like I was I was watching football at his house on Sunday. That was our thing. I wanted to go to Virginia Beach, hang out with my buddy. I saw Sean. Shout out to Sean. He came through too. Oh, cool. Because he was in he was in the states as well. So uh, I was talking to Bobby and I got so frustrated talking to him because he's one of those Steelers fans that is like not it doesn't think it's enough to not have a losing season for so many years. And I'm like, bro, come on, man. I'm, you sitting there talking to a Dolphins fan like this? You got the, one of the best coaches ever. He's just like, uh, you know, our one Super Bowl, he didn't, uh, He it was another roster, blah, blah, blah. I was like, when did y'all spend money in free agency? Mm. And he expressed his frustration with Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown, how they didn't get to stay there. Because if they did, the team would have been even stronger. I'm like, sure. but you're never losing. Like, you're having a great season, man. It's not the coach's I mean fault. <clears throat> no, definitely not. I mean, I can understand it to a certain degree, but at the same time, I I, I get it. It's uh, it's kind of hard to feel. Yeah, I, I can empathize, but ultimately, I don't give a fuck. Like, yeah. <laughs> just be <laughs> yes. happy with what you got. Like, you remember the Bengals? Uh, I forget they had the the coach man, kind of short dude. I forget his name, but they were going to the playoffs and losing in the first round like four years in a row. Mm. And to me, that felt like. I get that. That was when Ocho Cinco and and Carson Palmer right. and that's that uh that roster. And mm -hmm. then I was like, I got it when they finally fired him. Uh, mm -hmm. Marvin Lewis, I think that mm -hmm. yeah, I think that was him. The the mm -hmm. that I got it. But Tomlin, it's just different. There's a whole culture in there instead of just leaning on a, a really good quarterback like Marvin Lewis might have been doing. This is a the quarterback leaning on the coach. You know what I'm saying? This is a a, whole, a full culture that's built there. So I was just annoyed. And also, in the same way that you have uh, a team like the Green Bay Packers, where they've had quarterback stability for like three decades, yeah, you know, yeah, I, I think Pittsburgh has the same kind of setup, but more so in the coaching department. Like, right? I mean, they've had three coaches in the last forty years. Yeah, more, probably more. Yeah. That, that's unheard of. That's, I mean, yep. that's that's pretty cool. And they still have historically. I mean, what are they? Top two, top three of all time Super Bowls? Super Bowls? Number of yeah. Super Bowls? Right? They got so six, right? Like, so, yeah. just They're like tied with Dallas or, or one more than Dallas, something like that. It's them, Dallas, and then New England came so on just, in yeah. our lifetime. Yeah. So you're your buddy. And there's teams out there like Minnesota and the Jets, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> with zero and one or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. stop it. Stop it. Yeah, just relax. It's fine. Yeah. You have one of the greatest plays in NFL history. The 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 immaculate reception. Like yeah. come on, like you're, you're <laughs> what are you complaining about? <laughs> I have more of their highlights stored away in my brain vault than Dolphins highlights. So stop it. Yeah. <laughs> Steelers. Exactly. <laughs> I still dream about Lynn Swan sometimes. He was such a great 
he was one of my favorite receivers when I was a kid. Uh, he was so acrobatic and 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 I have amazing. nightmares about James Harrison. So there we go. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Actually, that's a fair point. <laughs> so you got dreams of Lin Swan. I got nightmares of James Harrison. Come on, man. Oh, he's a scary motherfucker. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, what's what's next? We got you said we got some news though, right? We do have some news. Yesterday was a very newsy day. Uh, so let's rip through it. We got um, Carolina Panthers have traded wide receiver Deontay Johnson to the Ravens. Um, now how many former... how many fire sales? Are they going to go through think, with this team? I think there's going to be a few. And to to be clear, for those of you who don't know, November 5th is Election Day in America. But I'm also pretty sure that's the day of the NFL trade deadline as well. Oh, okay. Um, so there's that too. Um, Deontay Johnson, obviously, um, you know, played for the Steelers a couple of years ago. He goes to the Panthers. Panthers ain't shit. So, you know, <laughs> I, I think this is a good pickup for the Ravens. I mean, definitely. He's a very familiar good with the AFC North. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and all they had to give up was a fifth round pick. So, not bad. Oh. Um, who else? Oh, right. Uh, the Vikings sadly uh, lost their left tackle Christian Darrisaw to a ACL injury this past week. So they oh, went out and yeah. made a trade with uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars to pick up left tackle Cam Robinson. Um, Ooh. So, Does that mean that's smart. it for that's it for Peterson, huh? I, I think I think the Jags are. We can probably stick a fork in the Jags because also uh, the other thing that's on the rundown here is uh, wide, Jaguars wide receiver Christian Kirk is done for the year with a broken collarbone. Ooh. Brian Brian Thomas Jr., their rookie wideout, he's done for about two to four weeks because of a rib injury. You also have Gabe Davis, who's banged up with a shoulder injury. I think the Jaguars Shit. are in a in a bad place right now. So yeah, yeah I think um, I think it's not gonna it's not gonna end well for them. Man, it's, it's looking like the AFC is the 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 conference that's looking unsteady now when it's always been the dependable <laughs> conference. It's where the quarterbacks are and all of that. Yeah. Um, let's see. Who else? Bad news. More bad injury news. Texans suffer a big loss. Stefan Diggs, season-ending, torn ACL. Oh. Uh, Non-contact play. It was just going into the cut of his route, and his knee just went blip. Oh, uh, damn. So that's not good. They're already down. Um, Nico Collins. Nico Collins. Huh? He... he he was he's been on IR for a couple of weeks, so we'll see when he comes back. So that just means I don't know. If you have Tank Dell in your fantasy league, you're probably happy about this, but uh Damn. no, yeah. nobody could be happy. Um Patriots rookie quarterback Drake May suffered a concussion in the last game. We'll see how long it takes for he him should to retire. Come back. He should retire. He should, shouldn't he? If he cares about his life. Hmm. No, that's a that's a that's the Dolphins fans <laughs> angle now. <laughs> Right. Anytime somebody gets a concussion, well, he should retire. Since Tua should retire. <laughs> totally. That's me as a bitter Dolphins fan. Um, The Chiefs, so a lot of you probably already know this because it happened last week, but we haven't really spoken about it yet, have acquired Oof. wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins in a trade with the Titans in exchange for a fifth-round pick that can turn into a fourth-rounder if the Chiefs go to the Super Bowl. Um, what constitutes co- collusion? Huh? <laughs> what and your, argument, collusion? Well, and your argument would be <laughs> it will be the bills giving up their pick so that the chiefs could have the fastest guy in football you know all right yeah go ahead man go ahead and then oh every trade they just win every trade instance yeah. man it's it's yeah. really frustrating i mean look the downside is that you know d hop <clears throat> He's he's battled injuries a little bit here and there over the last couple of years. Um, that being said, he did have a thousand yard season last year with Will Levis. So, um, yeah, man. I don't know. Quietly, I mean, if there's if there's one place in the world I expect them to figure out a way to use an aging wide receiver, I, I would pick Andy Reid over anyone exactly. to be able to figure that out. Uh, they also rich get richer. The Chiefs. Um, 
traded for Patriots edge rusher Josh Uche um, okay. in exchange for a six round pick. Uh, so, man, they're just willing and dealing. Yeah. Well, good thing they don't have the best quarterback in. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> hmm. Speaking of the best quarterback in football, the Colts have mm. decided to go back to Joe <laughs> Flacco. Uh, Anthony Richardson has been benched. Oh, um, man. You think it has to do after, with him taking himself out? <laughs> well, this is the week after this f- former Florida Gator, Anthony Richardson, tapped out of the game because he was tired. Uh, we'll now have pl- all the time in the world to <laughs> not only catch up, his, uh, catch up on his breath, but – he can also watch the Georgia Bulldogs beat up on the Florida Gators this weekend because they play on mm. Saturday. So he's, he's in good shape. Has he spoken uh, since the benching? I don't think so. Um, yeah, why would it, why would they care what he got to say? He's the backup. <laughs> <laughs> You're the backup. Speaking of which, in six games as a starter, uh, Richardson leads the league with 16.2 yards per completion. However... Mm-hmm. His 44.4% completion percentage is worse Ugh. than the average NFL backup. Ugh. Yeah. 44? So, you can't even get half? Mm-mm. <clears throat> and throw in, he has a 4 to 7 touchdown to interception ratio. Not good. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Sometimes stuff's so bad you got to laugh, man. God damn. <laughs> Yeah, if only we could have known that someone who had only played 13 games. Mm. Yeah, is not ready for NFL level. Who, I mean, it's like it's like that guy. Remember that time when, after 9-11 and they were like, how could we know that people were going to fly planes into buildings? And there was that yeah. one guy who was like, oh, you mean I told you guys that yeah. that was happening? <laughs> what was his name? Richard Pearl or something? I forgot his name. He was like, well, I don't know. I, I, don't I do. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> How could we know? Listen. We can listen. Mm-hmm. Listen. Watch. Um, anyway, yeah, so that happened. Um, I, the last story that I thought was kind of funny. Um, Cowboys Cowboys need a funny story because there's really nothing, <laughs> nothing funny about what's happening with the Cowboys. But this was pretty funny. Uh, Cowboys kicker Brandon Aubrey missed practice. Um, last week for a rather odd reason. Um, he had jury duty. Okay. What the, so, what just, man, I got a he, game, man. <laughs> he, he shows up, he, he shows up to jury duty, goes into the pool of jurors. Long story short, he's selected as one of 12 to serve on a jury presiding over a felony assault case that involves a strangulation. Oh, so he's he's probably got a uh, he's probably pretty familiar with it working in the NFL. <laughs> so yeah. much strangulation go on in there. Reached for comment, Aubrey said, "Quote: It beats hanging out with Jerry Jones." Whoa! Kidding? He didn't say. Oh, that. oh! <laughs> <laughs> he's about to get traded. He's gonna be on the Chiefs. He's the best kicker in the league, and he's basically gonna miss practice for the next. God knows how long because he has jury duty. They say he's they're like, going to work around his schedule, but it's still. Yeah. Just, I've never heard this before. I've never heard of. Nah, I never heard of. Yeah. Forced to serve a jury duty. Nah, but he's the it kicker. It kind of makes me think that he wants to. He is just yeah. the kicker. It's fine. He must be. He must know something. If I were the uh, the prosecutor, I'd be like, I don't know, man. This guy's too fishy. He wants this too much. Let's get him out of here. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. It, you know, other than there's some other stuff that I really want to talk about, but I think we need to wait and see. Okay. I just think it's weird. I, there, there, I've got something brewing on this whole hip, hip drop tackle situation. Man, is, I saw one hap- I saw one this, this weekend. I don't know if they, they didn't call it in the game, but I, I, I feel like a fine was coming. Well, that's the whole thing. They, there's at least nine, Cases where a player has been fined for a hip drop tackle this year. Do you know They're how many flagged. have been who have been flagged? Zero. Zero. None. <laughs> Remember how they said how easy it was going to be for the refs to see this? Yeah. Oh, I saw one uh, as I was watching. I was like, that looks like a hip drop tackle. Oh, no flag. Okay. Meanwhile, they're out here finding people like fifteen thousand dollars 
for something yeah. that they can't even see on the field. That's ridiculous. Also, man. last thing I want to say is thank you to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, I don't know if you, I don't know if you if you watched the game closely. If you saw Kyle Pitts' uh, second touchdown, where Antoine Winfield Jr. he he fumbled at the goal line. Did yes. you see that? Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Um, I read yesterday. Um, I mean, when I saw the replays, I was like, "Oh, he fumbled before he crossed the plane for yeah, sure." That's what I thought that's too. That's not yeah. going to count. They upheld the. They called it a touchdown on the field. They upheld the call. It stayed a touchdown. I read yesterday the reason why they upheld the call on the field is because the Tampa Bay Buccaneers do not have a pylon cam. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, are they being cheap? Like what? Why not? I thought every team had that. It's like you have got to be kidding me! That is a hundred percent a fumble if they have that pylon cam. <laughs> I thought it was. A, yeah, I, I, when I saw it, I was like, "Oh, that's a fumble. That sucks. Sucks for him." Thank you, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Thank I, you, Bucks, for being cheap. I assume they are installing a a pylon cam as we speak. Yeah. Uh, Shit, it's probably yeah. done already. <laughs> fans are pissed, dude. The fan. I went on to like, a, like a Reddit, a Tampa Bay Buccaneers Reddit stream, and they are, fine. Yeah, they are they're so probably, upset. What if it's a? Uh, what if it's Amazon was late bringing it? <laughs> if it's a delivery issue, <laughs> be hilarious. Uh, so now we're flipping and picking. Absolutely. All right. Well, let's, let's do it after the break. We back that last break there that you enjoyed was brought to you by Brisket and Friends. Brisket and Friends, the number one barbecue place in all of Scandinavia now, uh, according to the last poll. Uh, Brisket and Friends, barbecue so good it make you slap your grandma. So nice. check it out. Go to Brisket and Friends and ask for the Svenafel Table Breaker. You don't get a discount. They don't know what you're talking about, but you get to eat a table breaker. And that's what it's all about. Brisket and Friends. Thank you. All right, man. I'm flipping. I'm calling, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. <clears throat> you ready? Yeah, man. I was born ready. Okay, here we go. Flip. Tails, man. Oh wow, you're like it's like your is mojo. Two in a row? Is, it's just gone. Damn. Your mojo is just gone. It's heads. Damn, two in a row. I lost, man. What do you want to do? Let me see here. Let me see here. What do I want to do here? Goodness, uh, I'm gonna go first. Okay, I'm gonna go first. Oh, yeah, you get dolphins. Right. I'm gonna go first. Right. Oh, and <clears throat> on Halloween, Thursday night football, uh, I'm pretty sure the Houston Texans are gonna scare the loving shit out of the New York Jets. Uh, Texans are a little banged up, though. I was gonna say. So, hmm. Nah, I'm not going to overthink it. Um, they have to win at some point, though, don't they? The Jets? The Jets? No. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> not according to me. I mean, it, you got to do coach quarterback combo. And uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, when you put it that way, you know what? I'm not going to overthink this. I'm just going to go Texans. All right. Then we got the Cowboys and the Falcons. Man, this is a really tough one, man. Because now I feel like how you just said they got to win. I it agree. feels like Cowboys are due for a win. And the Falcons have a little bit of a cushion. Hmm. But the Cowboys also look like they're in shambles. And a pretty one-dimensional team. Mm -hmm. And if they're only going to be throwing into that secondary... It feels like the Falcons are going to – oof. And the Falcons are at home. Mm. All right. I'm going to go with the, the Falcons. <laughs> What's the world coming to? Yeah, man. How about that? I, I share your concerns. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely worried that, that CeeDee Lamb is going to cook us. Uh, yeah. But I do – feel a slight sense of optimism given that the Cowboys have the 32nd best run defense in the league. And we oh, got B. Man. John Robinson and Tyler out yeah. here. So um, I think we're going to run it. 
Yeah, down I think throat. so too. <laughs> yeah. uh, next up, we got the Bills and the Dolphins. I'm, I, I hate to do this, but I'm, I'm not going to waste much time on it. I'm going Bills. Yeah. This podcast keeps me from losing my mind mm. uh, in seasons like this, so mm. I'm good. Thank you for worrying about my mental health. Uh, mm. Always. <laughs> Raiders Bengals. I think the Raiders are going to continue spiraling. Uh thanks to GM Max Crosby. So uh <laughs> I think the Bengals are going to win this game. Did you hear did I mention on this podcast yet that the Raiders picked up Desmond Ritter as their backup quarterback? <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really hope he gets into this game. That'd be hilarious. Man. Uh, all right. I'm stuck with the Raiders on that one. <clears throat> Next up, we got the Chargers and the Browns. This one's a little tricky now that. Yep. Now that the Browns have know, a quarterback. <laughs> now that the Browns have an interesting quarterback. Um, that being said. Hmm. That being said, the Chargers have a pretty good defense. Pretty good. And is right. Jameis. Really, I mean, it, let's not get it twisted. Jameis should have thrown a game-sealing interception at the end of that game last week, and we'd be having a very different conversation. And I expect him to continue to throw um, multiple interceptions moving forward. So uh, I'm going to see past the hype, and I'm going to go with the Chargers on this one. Yeah. Bet the under. Agreed. Uh, did you hear him quoting uh... – <laughs> Jim is Winston quoted uh, Eminem. Yes, I did. I heard the pers- <laughs> his his post game. He's fucking crazy. I love yes, it. He's I love a that they're he's sticking microphones. I know, but I just love that they're sticking microphones in front of his face right now. He's so yeah. entertaining. Yeah, he's a he needs job. a gag order. Speaking uh, of the under, who you got in the next game? <laughs> <laughs> Patriots are playing the Titans in Tennessee. This Ooh. is the battle for the worst team in football, and I think the yeah. Titans are going to win that battle because the Patriots are going to win that game. <laughs> the Titans will continue being the worst team in football. It's going to end like two to three. Yeah. After this, the 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 loser of this game gets to go fight uh, in a wet T-shirt contest against the Panthers. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going Patriots. Yeah, Patriots are going to win this game. Okay. Two game winning streak. Who saw that coming? Yeah, who knew? Um next up, we got this year's Lions. Uh you know, the hot fun yeah. team, Washington Commanders uh are going to they're just going to absolutely eviscerate the New York yeah. Giants, I think. Yeah, I think so too. Then we got the uh, Saints are playing the Panthers. This is tough, man, because the Saints mm-hmm. are so beat up. And the Panthers aren't. They just have a bad roster. But Bryce Young is quarterbacking. Mm. It's like so many things, man. This is like the this is the poop bowl. My daughter's around. I don't want to say that it's a shit bowl. <laughs> <laughs> she just uh-uh. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> No, the uh, ah, this is tough, man. You you stuck me with some tough games. I'm gonna pick the Saints. I don't even want to do coach quarterback comp. Like, what are you doing this game? <laughs> Can you bring the coin back out? <laughs> Yo, Skip, bring the coin out. Okay. If it's heads, Saints win. Tails, Panthers win. <laughs> okay. All right. Here we go. All right, we're gonna do a coin flip on this. The first ever. What'd you say? Heads, Saints, Heads, Tails, Saints, Panthers? Tails, Panthers, yeah. It's Tails. All right. I'm going with the Panthers. Confidently. <laughs> 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 uh, the first ever Flip em, pick em coin flip game selection. Yeah. Brought to you by one. Brisket and Friends. <laughs> uh, no coin needed on this next one. The Baltimore Ravens are going to... Um, Gosh. Handle the Denver Broncos. How is it that you get these games, man? And then I get Bears Cardinals. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm behind. I got to catch up, man. I got to catch up. Yo, man, the ultimate thing you did was to go first. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm going to pick. 
I'm gonna pick the Cardinals, man. Hmm. I, I feel like they're a more like consistently functional football team. Yeah. The, the Bears, Bears didn't look that good against the Washington defense that should have been a little mm-hmm. easier for them. Mm-hmm. Unless Washington's coming into form on defense. That is Dan Quinn, so who knows? I, I kind of think they might be, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. So because um, they looked pretty good the week before, too. Um Yeah. But Kyler Murray, man, he's a tough one to to defend. He's They'll have defense all shake shaking up. So I'll go with that. I got another tough one. Eagles versus Jaguars. <laughs> <laughs> the fire oh, cell Jags. What will I what will I do? Playing in Philly. Is he gonna do it? No, he's not gonna do it. Uh I'm gonna <laughs> take the Eagles. You got the Jags. All right, then we got kind of a game of the week. When I'm looking at the rest of these lopsided games, we'll go with the uh, the Lions are just too hot, man. Lions over the Packers with Malik Willis, right? Because Jordan Love's got a growing injury. I think he's still growing. I think so, so too, yeah. we got to go with Lions on this one. That makes sense. Uh, finally, I get one that's a little tricky, but maybe not so much. I mean, I don't know. The Rams, obviously, they got Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup back, and Seahawks are looking a little sus. Um, yes. So I feel, I it, you know, it's a division game, so it, it's one of those ones that can go either way. But I, I feel I feel better about the Rams than I do about the Seahawks. So I'm going to go with the Rams. All right. I'm going to pick the. Uh... Finally get a, a lopsided game. Vikings are going to beat the Colts. Wow. Big Just time. out here disrespecting Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco's going to be running for his life. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Flacco, oh my God. <laughs> I literally, I wrote Vikings, but because I said Joe Flacco, instead of writing Colts, I started to write Flacco. Oh, well, that's all they got. Nah, they got Old pretty man. good defense. <clears throat> uh, okay, we rounded out. With Monday Night Football. Yeah. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and there are no pylon cams. Uh, <laughs> well, it won't matter because they're traveling to they're play playing. in Kansas yeah. City. I assume Kansas City has a pylon cam, but it won't matter because Kansas City Chiefs are going to rip up the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Nice. There you have it, everyone. That's our uh, flip them and pick them. Skiff might come back this week. Jeez. I'm feeling it. I got some tough ones. I actually uh, banged the score last week on the last game. Really? I don't, ever, I don't think I've ever done that. I got the I predicted the score correctly on the on the uh on the pick'em thing here. Nice. Mm-hmm. Um my Barry White sexist matchup. I'm gonna go with Bucks versus Chiefs, man. It's two uh it's the, the best player in football going against Patrick Mahomes. So uh, it's gonna be fun, man, to see the the, n- the number one and two quarterbacks <laughs> battling it out. It could be best quarterback in the NFC versus best quarterback in the AFC. So I'm ready mm-hmm. to check that one out. And it's a Monday night game. Everybody's gonna have eyes on it to watch the Chiefs beat up on the Bucks. But it'll be to me that's the game of the week. What you got? Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> uh, you know, for me. I'm going to go a little homer on this one because there's nothing sexier than revenge. Mm. Uh, The last time we invited the Cowboys into our building Mm. in Atlanta, we suffered one of the most embarrassing defeats at the hands of a watermelon kick. Do you remember the watermelon kick? Yes, I remember that. (laughs) I forgot about that. Where they kick that thing and it's rolling around and all the Falcons just forgot that they – they could just fall on it. Like they just yeah. watched it travel just at over. Him. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, whoa, that looks just like a watermelon. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to go with Falcons Cowboys. Um, I'm looking forward to that. My uh, Ken Patera upset of the week. If you want to see a, a fan base get worried, watch it happen. Because there's a team that's one of the best teams in football. And they keep losing to crappy teams. Mm. And I think this week, the Broncos can beat the Ravens 
and have everybody wondering how do you lose to the Raiders and the Browns and the Broncos and still be the best team in the AFC? That's weird. That's that's, that's the question that can be answered, and I think that's going to happen with my Kim Patera upset of the week, and Ravens fans will be saying, I'm so upset. (laughs) Mm. What you got? Um... That's not going to happen, by the way. But yeah, I thought it was fun to talk about. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, most of the ones that I feel really confident could be upsets, are ones that I kind of picked against already. Mm, okay. Um, like I do think the Bucks could surprise some people and actually beat the Chiefs. Agreed. They're due. I, yeah. I, I really do. I, I think they're kind of due. I think Baker is. Baker's never going to give up. Um. I, I, that's the one that feels the most realistic to me. And also because the Chiefs, you know, it's not – I mean, they're undefeated. They have to lose at some point. They're not winning yeah. all that convincingly. That that one to me feels like it's got a little bit of trap game written on it. Yeah, man. Something's got to give. That's an uh, electric offense over there. And then Chiefs have a dynamic defense. So, yeah, it's mm. a good one. My uh, bold prediction, our boy K-9. Mm-hmm. Going up against a divisional game team he's familiar with, Rams versus Seahawks. K nine two hundred all purpose yards. Give it up! Woo. Wow. Um, for me, my bold prediction. You know, we were all really impressed when Kirk Cousins threw five touchdown passes versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers a few weeks back. Uh huh. He threw four against them last week. Mm-hmm. But this week against the Dallas Cowboys. Oh. My wow. my man my man Kirko is gonna throw six touchdown passes <laughs> in this game. You're very you're very you're in your fan bag today. <laughs> six touchdown passes. In the sexiest game, of course, yeah. <laughs> but he's gonna throw six touchdown passes, but he's only gonna throw for two hundred yards, which is gonna be like oh. a weird statistical <laughs> anomaly because it's probably gonna be because of turnovers. Like we're just gonna get a ton of turnovers. Like mm. the Cowboys will turn the ball over in the red zone and then Kirk will throw a five yard touchdown and it'll be a mm. weird like one of the weirdest stat lines ever. Six touchdowns, like two hundred and two hundred and three yards passing. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Well, that's it, man. That was a a, a remote episode of Svenafel. <clears throat> we we thank you all for your for your viewing us. Mm. Uh oh. Uh, I got my. There we go. Got to get my. Mm. Once those horns play, you know you've either <laughs> heard something fantastic. Or was the beginning of something spectacular? (laughs) This has been another episode of SpinFL with your boys doing our thing, making our predictions. Follow our predictions. And if you bet on it, you get it right. You can join us on our betting journey, by the way, on patreon.com slash SpinFL and see what we're doing over there. This has been Jonathan Rollins. Skiff Bissara. With SpinFL. Peace. Later, y'all. Get serious. You better get yourself a job. Get serious, get a job. You get a job like the government said. Get serious, get a job. You better get yourself a job.